Welcome to N1 Industrial Electronics. This is chapter two on sources of electricity. Please remember to hit that subscribe button to support this YouTube channel. There are different types of sources of electricity, such as chemical reaction, where we use primary and secondary cells, electromagnetic induction, where we use generators and motors, solar energy, where we use solar cells, heat, where we use a thermal couple, and friction and static, such as rubbing silk on glass. There are two types of cells. We get primary and secondary. Primary, such as a watch battery, and secondary, such as a cell phone battery. What is a cell? It converts chemical energy into electrical energy. When comparing a primary cell to a secondary cell, a primary cell is not rechargeable. It has low output, short life expectancy, low internal resistance, low EMF per cell, and is smaller and easier to handle. Secondary cells, such as a cell phone battery, it is rechargeable, it has a higher output, longer lifespan, higher internal resistance, a higher EMF per cell. However, they are heavier when compared to primary cells. Examples of primary cells, carbon zinc, zinc chloride, alkaline, mercury, lithium, and zinc air. Examples of secondary cells, lead acid battery, nickel cadmium and lithium iron here we have the construction of a voltaic cell we have the negative anode which is the copper plate a positive cathode which is the zinc plate and we have flow of electrons from the copper plate to the zinc plate along the salt bridge the working principle of a voltaic cell electrochemical energy is converted from chemical energy into electrical energy. The copper plate is the negative plate where polarization takes place. You'll see tiny little hydrogen bubbles forming around that plate. The zinc plate is the positive plate where reduction takes place and electrons flow from the negative to the positive. Here we have two illustrations of the Lalange wet and dry cell. In terms of a lead acid battery, which is a secondary cell, we, when removing the battery, we must store it in a cool, dry place, remove the battery fully charged, do not allow the battery to be overcharged or overheated, and keep the terminals of the lead acid battery clean. Using Faraday's law to help us understand how to generate an EMF sine wave, Faraday's law states that an EMF will be induced whenever there is a change in flux. As the coil rotates and cuts the magnetic lines of flux at 90 degrees and 270 degrees, maximum EMF is induced. No lines of flux are cut at 180 degrees and 360 degrees, and therefore no EMF is induced. Faraday's law states that an EMF will be induced whenever there is a change in flux. As the coil rotates and cuts the magnetic lines of flux at 90 and 270, maximum EMF is induced. No lines of flux are cut at 180 and 360 degrees, and therefore no EMF is induced. This is a single phase generated sine wave. Here we can see the different labeling of the sine wave. We have the peak to peak. The positive half, we have a peak value. And in the negative half, we have a peak value. Now to calculate the RMS value and the average value, to calculate the RMS value, it will be 0 0.707 multiplied by the maximum value. To calculate the average value, it will be 0 0.637 multiplied by the maximum value. Here's a symbol for the sawtooth wave, the sine wave, and the square wave. Looking at this generated sine wave, we can see our peak to peak, our amplitude, and our maximum value. Now the period or time is the time taken to complete one cycle. However, when defining frequency, it is the number of cycles completed in one second. 
Thank you very much for watching this video. Hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.